Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Grand Brothers Turbo. Everybody and welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host Stephen White, and with me is, as always, Todd Stark. It's me. It's me. Two weeks in a row. Two, three, three weeks, weeks in a row. Yeah, get your I'm going right. for two weeks not peeing during the show. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's a big. That's a big goal for me today. So, how is everything? How you been? Um, haven't had a coke all week. That's. Uh, are you Are you doing that on purpose or? Yeah, just... I'm doing it on purpose. I'm trying to um, be healthy. Yeah, I can. I mean, I like, feel that. I don't need to lose weight or anything, you know? You're just trying to better your health right. in other ways. Yeah, yeah, because like, I also started eating uh, whole, like, the Whole30 plan, mm-hmm. if you've heard of it. Uh, no. <laughs> it's uh, You can still eat. It's just you eat whole foods, you know? Mm-hmm. you got to stay away from like dairy and stuff like that and fried foods. and You're good. You can still eat you know, as long as you don't take in so many calories. But right. There's no restrictions other than Moderation. that. Yeah, it's nice. It's okay. Mm-hmm. It's like I can't have chicken nuggets, but I still have chicken nuggets, <laughs> but I don't get them all the time. Right. So you're trying to better your health, yes. but yeah. make make uh, all the fried and yeah. fast food yeah. a treat. And Cokes. Um, I drank too many Cokes. I'd cut down to the little baby Cokes, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I took those for a little while, and then it just still, I was like, you know, I could do better. You can always do better. So it's, stop. It's, it's a hard thing to do, but... And the headache for two days. I can't believe Coke gives you a headache like that. Oh, I used to do me that way with uh, coffee. If I mean, I would only have a cup or two in the morning, two maximum, and I'd never mm-hmm. touch any of it the rest of the day, but or any caffeine for that matter. But if I would not have it that morning, I would have a headache by the end of the day, guaranteed. Oh, yeah. About one thirty. Mm-hmm. That son of a bitch hit in. It didn't stop. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. I've actually tried, I've swapped back over from coffee to tea in the morning to try and cut down my caffeine intake. So I'm trying to do better too. Yeah. Uh, I've, I didn't do this intentionally. This just kind of happened. I haven't had a beer since Saturday or Sunday. That's good. So I've, I've been doing a lot of, a lot more water too. Yeah. So it's just, it's just there. It's happening. You it's know? always good. It's always good to, at least for a little while. Cause you yeah. know, like too much of anything is bad. Mm-hmm. I think too much of being healthy is bad at some point. Well, I, I mean, anytime that I've tried to be healthy, there there comes a point where you're just like, my God, I just, I need something because you push yourself. You actually remember that time that we were trying to be doing like a juice diet. Oh, and I, I remember that. I almost like fell out because I was like, I need food. I need real food. I don't care what it is. And I got what and got like a very simple Subway sandwich. Yeah. It barely had anything on it, but it was like, I just need Something in my something solid yeah. instead of juice because I, I was just dying. That. I understand. I've been hungry yeah. all week. I mean, I haven't cut back my foods, but I'm just wondering if the food that I'm eating is not making me hungrier. Mm-hmm. You know, just for could be. Yeah, I don't know. I it's think your body's weird. just trying to adjust to it all. Yeah, could be. So, and I think that's the hardest part is just getting through the adjustment period because you're you're trying to change your habits, and then you're just struggling from that point on. So, yeah. yeah. And then you heard it here on Super Mega Crash Brothers Diet Turbo <laughs> Turbo <podcast. Diet. laughs> We'll come up with a whole plan and everything, and you can just you yeah, know join yeah. up, and we'll tell you how to live your life healthy through video games. Yeah. And eating. Just don't eat snacks. Play video games. Stand up and play video games. Mm-hmm. And don't eat snacks. You know, actually, I won't say I had a little conversation. I heard someone talk about how... Uh, speaking of video games, they use, like, they ask, what's your favorite snack while you play video games? And I just sat there and thought, and I was like, I don't snack while I play games. I can't. If I'm going to eat, I'm going to stop playing games, and then I'll eat, and I'll come back to the game later. Yeah. But I don't, I've never snacked and gamed ever. Right. Like, mine, I... I can't say I haven't ever ate during like I don't sit there and eat it while I'm playing the game. Like mm-hmm. I sit the controller down, eat the little snack, then I go. Usually yeah. I eat it right before I play. It's a Star Crunch. <laughs> that was mine. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, 
but I don't eat while I, I'm always in, I don't want to get the controller dirty. Yeah. I've always oh, yeah, exactly. about that. That's me. I'm like, if Peyton grabs my controller, I'm like, ah! <laughs> wash your hands. Cause I know she's just, she's little kids are filthy. You know, yeah, they are. she probably picked her ass. She picked her nose, mm-hmm. did both at the same time. I don't know, but like wash your hands. Exactly. Have the controller smelling funky. Like, please, please don't do this. I paid a lot of money for this. Don't touch it. Yeah. So, like, you touched my controller. No, I didn't, Daddy. There's Cheeto fingerprints on yeah. the controller. Cheeto dust. Oh, yeah. yeah. My, my TV is the, the worst offender for that, <laughs> where my kids, well, my littlest one will smudge her fingers on it. Yeah. And you just look at all the little fingerprints. It's like, you know, this was clean yesterday. Yeah. Why do you have to touch the TV? I don't understand why you have to touch the TV. Just yeah. leave it alone. You see, like, they're so high up, I don't have to worry about that. But what I do worry about is the dogs come mm-hmm. by and Tyson's big sloppy jaws. Yeah. He shakes them and he just peppers the screen. Like, it's all over there. It looks like a bukkake Nasty. of dog <laughs> mess. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just what the hell he ever he ate mm-hmm. is in his jaws. It's always like that. Yeah. And then he's, he does his head like that. Yeah. Nasty. That's gross. I'm like, I don't even like you right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm like that with animals. So, uh, what have you been playing this week? I played Little Nightmares. Been wanting to play it for a long time. I do want to play that. It's really good. Really good. Um, I don't know if that flash sale so long. You can get the regular game for five ninety nine. I, I was looking at it, I think, last night, and I was debating because I, I had this conversation, I'm pretty sure, with you or somebody recently. was like, I've got too many games as it is. I know, man. I want to, I want to play that, but I was like, it's just another one I'm going to add to the pile. I might yeah. as well just wait. But I you know, this play. is probably one of those ones that you should play. Mm-hmm. I think you would dig it. Oh yeah, I have no doubt. They were it talking looks something right up my alley. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's, cre- it's got a creepy feel to it. Mm-hmm. it. Feels like the cave. I was telling you that yeah. earlier, but yeah, it feels like that. Not in the sense you got to go grab all this stuff and go back down and do all this, but you got to do these little puzzles and the atmosphere feels like that. That game. Yeah. So it's really Pretty good. Cool. What have you been playing? Uh, went back to Monster Hunter briefly to try out the Devil Ho. And the Devil Ho. Man, I'll tell you what, it was, I was ready for him. And when I got out there, they said, you know, when, when the event started, a little message popped up that said, Hey, Devil Ho has been sighted. Go out on an expedition or a quest and find him. So I said, all right, cool. I'll just go out on an expedition. It'll be easier that way. So I don't have to worry about killing a monster and whatnot. What I didn't think about going out on an expedition is they can run away. Right. So I went out there, fully stacked, fully loaded, and I wailed on this bastard. And he put up a fight, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like this was easy because he was a beast. You know, he kept yeah. me on my toes the whole His time. His Devil Ho. And I can say with, you know, certainty, I didn't die. You know, not once while fighting him. I stayed, I stood my ground, so I was happy about that. He got me almost... A few times. Yeah. And what was worse is I think I got caught up between a fight between him and an Azure Rathalos. Mm-hmm. And that was not fun because yeah. they're sitting there just wailing on each other. So it was interesting to see from a distance, not up close. Right. But that is one of the best things, too. Oh, yeah. About but watching them in that game. What happened is he started limping. I, ha- I had him on the ropes. He was limping off. And then it said, you know, Devil Ho will leave the area soon. I'm like, the hell you will. <laughs> I started chasing him down. I was like, no, 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 you're going to die. So I'm just doing everything I can. And he finally starts running off. And I'm in my mind, all I'm thinking is I got to kill him. I'm going to kill him before he runs away. And I chase him to a spot where he falls asleep. And my first real instinct should have been go back to the camp and grab a trap and yeah. some bombs. But no, my first instinct at that point was like, Ah, and just start wailing <laughs> on him. And then two seconds later, he took off. And I was like, son of a bitch. Right. So my first encounter did not go. So you could have trapped planned. him and took him home with you? Yeah. Because he's not classified as an elder dragon. Okay. That was my next question. Is yeah. he an elder dragon? No. He's a world eater is what they call him. That's kind of higher than an elder dragon. Anyway. You'd think so. But you can yeah. capture him. But you can, yeah. Traps work on them. It's so, just those elder dragons. Yeah. So it was... I made a mistake. I made a flawed effort trying to to take him down, but at least now I have a an official quest to fight him, so now I can fight him. Yeah. So it was it was fun to at least touch him up and and kind of rough him up a little bit to figure out what he was all about again because I had forgotten a few things because I couldn't remember if he had 
like a, a power, you, does he? like like a fire power right. or something like that. And I was like, I feel like he does, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And then, of course, he blows out this big dragon breath. And I was like, that's it. Okay. It's been so like, he hit you with some sort of dragon blight. What? Okay. His name's Devil. It's its name is Devil Ho. Yeah. What does his breath smell like? Uh, well, if I was to imagine uh, like a garbage dump in the middle of uh the dog days of summer i think you're wrong next to a uh, pile of dirty diapers you're wrong what does it smell like i mean it's devil hoe mm-hmm. it probably smells like anything like a prostitute's mouth like Could have. anything like that but like with the dragon parts gotcha okay and it's probably got a fat pocket full of tins mm-hmm. if you tried to pick its pocket okay if you could get that close if you, yeah, it you was get sleeping. You should you should have got the trap, picked his pocket, have. got the fat wad of tins, and rolled out. No, but I didn't. Dragon pecker breath, you know. No, I didn't. So devil hoe. I'm disappointed in myself, for, you know, because I did that. Yeah, I mean, you could buy little nightmares. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> uh, also played a little bit more of the Dragon's Lair trilogy. Uh, I was trying. I was kind of showing it off to my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Played through one and then went through two, and you can't beat two unless you collect treasures. I don't know if you knew that or not. No, no. But that was something I learned after the fact, like the very first time I was playing it. Yeah. So I made a point to try and collect all the treasures this time. But somehow, two that I collected in the very first level didn't count. Uh, So once I got to the next area, they were gone. I'm like, well, what kind of shit is this? And then I went through most of the rest of the game and got all of them except for one and it was in the most chaotic level in the game that right. I do, I can't remember where it's at I I may have seen it but I don't remember well what are you looking for they're they're just little artifacts like in the very first one you'll see a, like a bow and an arrow mm-hmm. like pretty much in the same like two scenes back to back right so instead of moving in the direction that you're supposed to go you can move up to grab the arrow and then to the side to grab the bow, and it still counts as a move, they just skip whatever that move is going to be and see, shows you grabbing it, and then you just move on. So it's just different artifacts that apparently count to the end of the game or getting to the last scene, and I don't know what it is. I don't know how they play into it. But they're just random artifacts for whatever area you're in. Right. So, um, And then I even played Space Ace, which is the third one on that collection, and I don't think I'd ever beaten it before. I had it on like a uh, interactive DVD mm-hmm. at one time, and it was just terrible to play. Right. But this obviously is built for it. And I didn't realize how uh, short it was. It was just a very short game. Right. Because I beat it, I think, on medium to begin with. And I thought, man, this just kind of breezed through. So I went back and played it on the harder difficulty to see if maybe there were scenes omitted. Right. Same game. I wonder, you know, it's like that with a lot of games, like Contra. Mm-hmm. I feel like I played Contra forever. Yeah. But when I you go play it, you can beat it in an hour and 15 minutes. You oh, know, that's... It's, it's, you don't think about it until you play it again. You realize, man, it was... I guess, like, back then, it was so hard to figure out because you ain't seen anything like it. Yeah. So... so. That's a, that's a funny thing with a lot of those old in- Nintendo games is just seeing how quick you can beat them now. Yeah. But they seem so long for us because we struggled with them as kids. Um, but the last game that I played, I'm going to talk about in our review today, which was Regions of Ruin, and I can't wait to talk to you about that. Is it something that I would like? I think you would dig it. I think I really think you would. So hopefully during the review, you'll listen to it and think, hey, this is a game I might want to play. I think you. Re- I really think you would, just based on certain games that we've played in the past and talked about. I think you would dig it. Good, awesome. I, I, I wish I could play it. All right, now on to the news. I've got a few <laughs> things to cover. Just a few. Yeah, because it was uh, off and on. Some of the news was just kind of. <laughs> but I think a lot of it's getting saved up for PAX East. That's what I think. Very so. soon, so we'll see. Uh, the first thing I got is Ubisoft dodged a bit of a bullet this week after a mass media conglomerate, Vivendi, almost uh, took over, but it sold its entire stake back into the company. Over the last year, Vivendi was believed to be attempting a hostile takeover of Ubisoft, something that the company has had a uh, history of doing. 
Their stake in the company was a sizable 27.3%, but nearly 20 of those shares were bought back by the Guillemot brothers, which was uh, actually the founders of Ubisoft, and the rest were bought up by two other investors. Now, even though the company is safely in the hands of its founders, Vivendi could still come back and buy stock in the company, attempting this coup once again, but it will have to be five years down the road, as that was actually a stipulation of their deal. Yep. So... I did look into Vivendi a little bit. They they've got a a habit of doing that, which is yes, surprising. they do, and I don't like them. No, I, mean, I think they would hurt the. Yeah, they Ubisoft. would totally hurt them. I, I really feel that. When I started reading into it, I felt the same way. I was because Ubisoft. I feel like they at least try. Yeah, I mean they they try to do the right thing. That's that's more than you can say for like EA. They just screw you and don't care mm-hmm. sometimes, most of the time. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to see Vivendi take those guys over. No, they'll, they'll, we'll say again. It'll take it five years and see what happens. But I think they've kind of, if they try it again after five years, there's some low down bastards in that company. They, they are. You you got pushed away for a reason. Just go on somewhere and yeah. find yourself another company to to bully around or Please. whatever. Uh, the next story I have is uh, we actually briefly mentioned last week that Atari was going to reveal their new Atari box at the uh, Game Developers Conference. However, an official name was also announced with it. It's now called the Atari VCS. Yeah. Or Video Computer System. I've seen it, but I don't know anything that it does. Well, that's what was uh, interesting to me about trying to figure this out or researching it is because I didn't quite get a clear answer yeah. either. Because they showed two controller prototypes, one that was very modern design, kind of Xbox style, kind of clunky, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I kind of felt the same way, it looked like an Xbox. And then they had uh, an old school Atari controller, uh, like the Atari 2600 joystick. That's still one of my favorites. (laughs) And I was kind of curious about as to why they would do that, but if they're bringing back Atari games like we've speculated in the past, you'd want That's the only way to play those games. Oh, yeah. Like, you could play them with the toggle stick. Come on, they're not fun. I, can, I hate playing Galaga on the PlayStation yeah. 4. You need that stick. You yeah. need the buttons. Uh-oh. The war's coming. The airplane's the coming. Airplane show. <laughs> wow, he's, he's close today. Anyway, uh, from the information that Atari provided, uh, they hope, this is what they say, they hope to redefine the way you interact with your TV, but in the same way that the Atari 2600 did 40 years ago. They also confirm that classic content will be available to play, but it's more than that. Other details mention access to popular and upcoming indie games, but beyond that, nothing more than marketing talk was really quoted in their right. statements. That's how I feel. It's a very eye-catching design with the wooden panel, yeah. you know, looking like the old... It, so look, I, it looks like a slimmed-down version of that. Yeah, and it, it, it really blends in with, you know, yeah. the decor if you kind of have that kind of stuff. So it, it looks nice. Right. But what is it? You know, you can't just tell me, oh, you can play old games on it and indie games. Okay, now how are you changing the scape of how I interact with my TV? Right. Because I can do that with the console I have now. That's the thing. That's why I kind of laugh when I hear that. That's all All they're doing is talking same thing, console talk. Yeah. But I, I can see, like, people's dads playing with them. You know, like, I'm yeah. this game. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool, you know? It'll be a nice little throwback, but yeah. some of those games, man, we've talked about it before. I don't think they just they don't have the staying power no. like Nintendo games no. do. Oh Lord, no! Uh, you know those twenty six hundred games, they're fun, but that's it. Yeah, like Mario Brothers is. I mean, that's like the gold standard for mm-hmm. nostalgic video games for sure. So I don't know. I want to. I want to hear more about what they're talking about other than marketing yeah. speak. And we they probably won't talk about it. Probably, probably won't ever come out. It's probably a Steam box. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I have is there were was an award ceremony at GDC, but there was also one at uh, South by Southwest. Now, when I list each of these uh, awards that were released, you're going to notice a bit of a pattern. Yeah. And I think it's no different than some of the patterns we've seen from the other award ceremonies we've talked about for right. games of 2017. Are these from 2017? These These are games games from 2017 that are winning awards, you know, now. Gotcha. Uh, To begin, here's the uh, GDC list of games uh, that won awards. Best Audio went to Breath of the Wild. Best Debut went to Studio MDHR for Cuphead. Best Design went to Breath of the Wild. Best Mobile went to Gagoroa. Why not Breath of the Wild? (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. 
Go, yeah, go, go, gora. G O R O G O A. Gogora. 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 There we go. I found it. It also won Best Innovation Award. Best Narrative went to What Remains of Edith Finch, which I still want to play. Best Technology went to Horizon Zero Dawn, which I'm not quite sure what that entails. (laughs) Meh. Okay. Uh Best Technology in the game. Why not? (laughs) Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Uh, Best Visual Art went to Cuphead. Best VR AR game went to Super Hot VR. Audience Award went to Near Automata. Game of the Year, Breath of the Wild, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and they also had two special awards, the Ambassador Award, which I have no idea what that is. I'm going to assume something to... I don't know. I'm not going to take a guess. I was going to try. What's and I the just, game? I have nothing. Uh, Ambassador Award went to Rami Ismaili, or Is- Ismail. I'm trying, man. Oh, is that like to a developer? Yeah. Rami Ismail. Oh, maybe that's kind of like best developer of the year or something. Probably. You know. uh, he made uh, games like Serious. Well, his company uh, made Serious Sam, The Random Encounter, and Luft Rousers. And that one actually sounded familiar. And I went that back, that was that airplane. Yeah. I remember playing that game. It was yeah. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It kind of felt like an Atari game. Yeah. And then their Lifetime Achievement Award went to Tim Schafer. Uh, well deserved. Yeah. He, he started Double Fine. The Cave, Full yeah. Throttle, Monkey Island, Grim Fandango. I can go on. He's got a list a mile long. What are, did he have something to do with Maniac Mansion? Uh, or was it just the company he would? I think it was when he was with Lucas Art or Lucas Arts. Yeah. He was with Lucas Arts, but I don't think he had anything to do with that one. I think there was another guy involved, but I think, but he did do Day of the Tentacle, which is the follow up to that. Okay. So, not involved directly, but in the sequel, obviously. Not involved directly, but involved, possibly. Maybe. Friend, no. He probably took a paper to somebody. <laughs> yeah. You never yeah. know. Yep. He was a fan, at least. Now, over at uh, South by Southwest, we had these winners. And again, you'll probably hear a lot of the oh, same Lord. things. Visual Achievement, uh, Horizon Zero Thank Dawn. Thank God, okay. Technical Achievement, Near Automata. Uh, special Effects, which I didn't realize video games had that. Super Mario Odyssey. Narrative went to re- What Remains of Edith Finch, Multiplayer, uh, PUBG, Musical Score, Near Automata, Gameplay, Breath of the Wild, Design, Breath of the Wild, Convergence. Do you know what that is? No clue no what idea. Convergence is in a video game. Excellence in Convergence went to Star Wars Battlefront 2. It actually won an award. <laughs> Maybe they're saying it did good even though... Like they had, it was attacked before it came out. Something like that. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, Excellence in animation and art, Cuphead. And that's two separate awards. Animation and then art. Uh, Most promising new IP, Horizon Zero Dawn. Most fulfilling community funded game, A Night in the Woods. Matthew Crumple Cultural Innovation Award went to Doki Doki Literature Club. I never even heard of that. I remember Doki 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 Literature Club is a PC game. It's actually free. I actually downloaded it on Steam. I haven't played it yet. But it's a visual novel that apparently just goes off the rails. It starts off like one of those uh, like anime, you know, teen girl. Oh my gosh, we're in school. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. Like you're having some big romantic thing and then it just goes into some deep, dark territory about yeah. suicide. I don't know. It just, from what I've seen of it, it just, it goes off the rails pretty wow. quick. Yeah. I want to play it. Yeah, exactly. When wow. you see what it is, you're just like, what? It, it sparks your interest because if you saw it just as the, you know, anime cutesy tween girls in Japan, you'd be like, yeah. I ain't playing that. I still want to so. play that um, game where you pick up the women. Yeah. <laughs> Super Seducer. Yeah. For some reason, it's like peak my Because it's it's like one of, it's a bad movie. You hear so much yeah. about it at one point. It's like, I got to see this. Yeah. I got to see it. It's a train wreck, but uh, I got to see you it. borrow Cell Block 99. You know, I've actually heard other, like, a completely different take on that. I'm dead you, serious, I'll man. let you watch it, dude, and you just I tell need me. to, because when you said that, I was like, I, I feel like I've heard about this. I looked up reviews, and they were very positive. They are very good. It's like 92% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and usually that is an awesome movie. Uh, they have never let me go, you know, never s- steered me the wrong way. This movie is terrible. Someone got paid off. <laughs> dude, like the effects? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Did I, did I even tell you how the ending... I don't think so because I said I'm not going to check you. it out. I want you to see it. Okay. Like they didn't even try, dude. They didn't even try. Well, again, I'll have to check it out. 
Like, I think I'm it's on Amazon. Like, if you tell me, hey, we did it like that on purpose. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Cool then. You know, that's awesome. No, they got paid one day. They did this in one day. <laughs> Special effects and all. And just said, that, that's all yeah. we're doing. That's it. It's so funny. Uh, we also had uh, Trending Game of the Year and Esports Game of the Year went to PUBG. VR Game of the Year went to Resident Evil 7. Mm. Tabletop Game of the Year went to Gloomhaven. Mobile Game of the Year went to Fire Emblem Heroes. And of course, Video Game of the Year, Breath of the Wild. <sighs> Every so, time. Yeah, every time. So if it's game of the year, top game, and any awards category, it's just going to go to Breath of the Wild this year or for 2017 games. So we know yeah. that. Horizon should have been on there. I know. Well, it got it got visual. It did. Achievements. Come on, like best narrative goes to what? What did it go to? Uh, what remains of Edith Finch? Okay, but I do want to. I do want to play time. that. I've heard because you know, that's a great story too. Yeah, I really want to play it. That. But from what I've heard, is it's just outstanding. But I guess it just came out at the wrong time. You're going yeah. against Zelda. And then the other strong thing you have, another game that comes out has a very strong story. Now you got to go against both of those. Yeah, I don't know. It's so just it's, unfair. Well, it's we fair. know how good it is. Yeah, it's not fair. They they should be rewarded for what they do. And they they will. And I agree with with people that did Breath of the Wild because that was a, a fresh take on it to me. Mm-hmm. It felt brand new. So they did a good job too. And it's not that they don't deserve the awards. No, it's just. I know what you mean. It's just it's, we're talking about we're talking about a game franchise that's been around for a long time versus a new IP right. that deserves a little yep. bit more respect and credibility right. for being new, for, right. for bringing something new. Yeah, to that's the table. what I like. Yeah, and I think that that's that was kind of my argument too as to what should have given it Game of the Year because right. it's new. Right. You know, this is something we haven't seen before, so why not, not award that? But again, Zelda did something different too. So yeah, it just came out at the wrong time. Yeah. Still sold six million copies though. But there's always a chance of a sequel, and who Thank knows? God. I gotta play that. I'm gonna say the E3 this year. Yeah, it's not gonna be there. Probably not. All right. Next thing I've got is also during uh, GDC, NBC Universal and Unity announced a Universal Game Dev Challenge, which is a competition for game developers to create a new game idea based off of the company's established IPs. However, and this is where I was disappointed. Not all IPs are included, just a selection. Oh, what are they? Turok, yep. Voltron Legendary Defender, mm. Battlestar Galactica, mm. Back to the Future, and Jaws. Jesus H. They ain't helping you at all. No. Because what what I found funny is I was like, I know they've got more than this. I went back and looked at their list of franchises they have, and yeah. I'm like, this is what you pick from? Right. And you don't pick all these others that you have here? It was just, I don't know. I'm surprised, but I guess they're the, but they're not even the biggest names I have. Two Rock of all things. Two Rock is terrible. So, I don't know. But anyway, uh, the contest has a set of rules in place like many do. Developers have one month for a pitch, which a panel of judges will choose their favorite six ideas. Afterwards, those six studios will create a demo of the project around the pitch. The winner will receive twenty five or $250,000 and a chance to develop the game in its entirety. I mean, what... All right. Out of all these games, let's let's take a look at the yeah. two that I'm mo- more interested in in making a game. Okay, to read them again. I want to hear them. Turok? Uh-huh. All they're going to do is make another... Dinosaur Hunt game. Yeah. So... But I know how you could... I think he could do it different. How? Okay. Like... Take Two Rock and put it in like modern day California, wherever you want to put him. Okay. Right? Whatever he's doing. And you get to see the beginning of all the, the dinosaurs starting to take over. They start screwing, just messing stuff up, you know? Okay. They get here somehow. I don't know how. So well, the portal opens up, dinosaurs come through, and they come through. It's like Pacific everything. Rim with dinosaurs. Okay. They start showing up and. The war, the whole first five levels, you ain't even the dinosaur hunter. You're just trying to survive, and you become to rock the dinosaur hunter. I mean, I'm thinking about your your land yeah. down here. That's a, that's an all right idea. Okay, so that's one. We got that. Write that okay. one down. That one's out. Uh, Voltron. Now, di- didn't they just do a VR game of this? They did. It was like an experience, I think. Oh. More, more yeah. or less. Well, I mean, you've got to, you have to, with with a game like this, you'd have to put multiple. 
ideas in place. You'd have to be on the ground, you'd have to play as one of the characters, and then you'd have to play as one of the lines. But, you'd have to pick between one of the five, or you have to play all of them. So each one yeah. of them, at that point, would have to have different skill sets, I would hope, because if you're playing as different lines, which they all have different... This needs to be a multiplayer game. You Either have to that. play with five people <laughs> online, yeah. and you have to work together to create Voltron. It's a way out with Voltron. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Or you could play it like Final Fantasy, like a role-playing type game. Okay. Yeah, because it, it all have to be about the team effort. Yeah. However you do that. Battlestar Galactica, I don't know shit about I ain't playing that damn so game. <laughs> it's out. I'm sorry. Back to the future. Now, Telltale Games did a narrative. Yeah. They rewrote history in a way and then kind of tweaked it. So, how would you do a game like that differently? Because I felt like they kind of did the game yeah. the way it should have been. Right. It's a narrative. What else can you do? That's one thing about those guys. They they picked the right ones, the mm-hmm. right stories to tell. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what you would do to that. I don't feel like it works as any other kind of game but that. Yeah. Because, again, it's all about the narrative, nothing more. I mean, it's not about, oh, we can do half pipes with hoverboards and, oh, we're going to go yeah. run through Hill Valley and beat up Biff. It's just, it doesn't work as an action game or any other type of game but a narrative. Now, Jaws, on the other hand, I was sitting there trying to think about this. What could you do to make Jaws a decent game. Now, I don't know if you remember back in the LGN days, they made yes. that one on Nintendo. I Where actually he swam back and forth. Yeah. You, how do you kill him? You, okay. Now, I played this game because I owned it. <laughs> I think I got it over there. And this is how it works. Because it's the dumbest shit ever because that's the way LGN was. But I, but I beat it. Okay. You start at one port uh-huh. and you go to the other port. Mm-hmm. And then when you do that, your ship upgrades. So and then you go back to the from that port back to the other port and upgrade your ship again. <laughs> then you go back to the other port and upgrade your ship again. You just go back and forth. Okay, hoping that you don't get hit by Jaws or whatever's in the water because eventually you'll get hit some, by something and you've got to go down and collect conch shells and whatever the hell else and fight off whatever's floating around down the water. Right. But you level up and that allows you to defeat Jaws faster. Hmm. So when he does show up, because I think I did it around level four is a really good point. Level five or six, if you can get up to that point with your ship, yeah. you'll you'll take him down a lot quicker. But once he shows up, you have to get down in the water with him, and then you'll have like a little pellet gun or whatever. It looks like a little butt, like a little arrow, harpoon right? gun. Yeah, yeah or just, actually, it's a so you just sit there and shoot him and shoot him, and he's got like one little health bar. And what's funny about those areas is if you don't, if you're a weak level. You won't take him down much at all. Uh-uh. And then the more you level up, you can start taking him down faster, but he can still end the area because it's like a time limit under the water you've right. got set. So you've got to take his uh, his energy down all the way. And once that happens, you'll shift back onto the boat, but kind of in a first-person style mode. Now oh. you're looking at the mast of the ship and Jaws is coming at you. So you have to hit a button once he's close. Make him jump out of the water and then ram him with the boat. Just like they did in part four. Because that's what this is all based on. The boat jumps out of the water? No, you have to... It, you hit a button which is supposed to make Jaws jump out of the water. You got to time it just right and then you ram the boat into him when he's up out of the water. And kill him. So how, So all of a sudden you're controlling Jaws? No, no, no. Jaws is coming at you. Right. He's just swimming back and forth. You've got to time it just right to hit a button, and then he'll jump out of the water hmm. and spin around. Wee! That is the stupidest. <laughs> but hey, it, it was worked. scary back then, though. Yeah, of course, because that's all we had. I was so, terrified of Jaws. But a game like that, I mean, if you do it today, I'm not saying make that game today. But you know you could do some kind of seafaring adventure where that shark is out there. And you could take it to a whole nother level. This is actually one of the times I don't want to play as the antagonist. Right. Because I remember they did a Jaws game where you got to play as the shark and it was the dumbest shit (laughs) I've ever played in my life. I can't remember that game. It was... I remember playing it on the Wii. Let's just put it that way. It was in that time frame of gameplay. It was just... It was terrible. It was stupid. Well, that was a good idea, though. Yeah. Let's let you be the shark. But but what they oh, made you something. do, like you were just... 
you swam and you ate something again. No, it was just like you're you're it doesn't it doesn't make sense. No. For what for the narrative they were doing, it doesn't make sense because it was like, Josh, you gotta open this gate and it was like, Okay, how I'm the fuck does it? I ain't got no damn hands. I know. <laughs> it just you gotta figure out a way to Use do your it. Fin, I don't know. Flap it twice. <laughs> the gate open. Flip your tail and whatnot. But yeah, I don't know. Uh if if a game developer comes up with something, I'm all for it. I would love to see something where you're actually terrified of Jaws. Yeah, for you real. know what I mean. Like yeah. you're you're on a boat and whatnot, and you're worried and terrified if he's going to come after you. Do a sea of thieves with Jaws. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, so we'll see. Uh, now on to some quick hits this week. Quick hits. Quick hits. Quick hits. Quick hits. Uh, PlayStation Spain announced that the PS Vita has been discontinued in their territory, which surprise, raises the surprise. question: Is this uh, the st- beginning of the end for the Vita? Yes, they just took the uh, PS Plus games away. Mm-hmm. I'm fixing. To, I'm fixing to get rid of mine. Well, they're gonna they're gonna get rid of it next year. But it's coming. well, not next year. It's in the next couple months, ain't it? No, they like said uh, March of 2018. Oh, PS3 oh. and Vita games are out. Okay, well, at least they gave you a year. I yeah. guess I missed that part. You did. I, you day. weren't here when I announced that on the news. That, you was, were, that was one of your off shows. That was my off show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't play it all that often. It was fun. I hate that it's going, but... Uh, I'm fixing to trade mine to GameStop. Yeah. Uh, Fortnite Mobile, because I don't know what else to call it. I guess that's what we're going to call it. I don't understand that. I don't know. Uh, it's currently the fourth, fourth highest grossing app in the Apple App Store, despite being in limited access beta. And it's earned $1.5 million. Fortnite has also surpassed PUBG in monthly revenue, making yeah. $126 million in February alone. I don't get it. I like PUBG way better. I, something shifted, man. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Something shifted. Well, I think that well, they say, you know, like it's uh, PUBG's just too hard. And then, like, you go play Fortnite and, dude, that game's. I ain't killed anybody. I've never killed anybody in that game. Hmm? And maybe I just didn't give it a chance. I could have got better. Well, again, I've I've never played it. I'm sitting on it, and I just I haven't hopped on the hype train. So someone's gonna have to talk. Well, it's me into entertaining. It. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the flip side, PUBG Battlegrounds is now available for iOS and Android here in America. Yeah. So it's it's out. It's there if you want to go get it. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, Target confirmed a Spyro Treasure trilogy. We knew it. Yeah. We called it. We we said a rumor last week. Yeah. Now it's a fact. No, it's well. We made it fact. Yeah, we we did. We called them. But Target, you know, they don't know how to be discreet. They just said, "Oh yeah, it's coming." Yeah, we said, "Mr. Target, we're gonna um bring this game out. Mm-hmm. We need y'all to get the Spyro collection." And, and they just like, blabbed. They did. Can't keep it because back. somebody on Twitter asked about it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we forgot." Mm-hmm. Uh, Ark Survival Evolved is coming to Nintendo Switch later this year. Uh. Good for them. Dynasty Warriors is getting a movie called Dynasty Warriors Destiny of an Emperor, currently filming in China with a release date of 2019, which means 2020 here, maybe? So it's going to be Great Wall of China again. Probably. Uh, There's also a live-action Street Fighter TV show in the works. Wow. I don't know. (laughs) Nobody fights in the streets anymore. (laughs) They said it's going to be very accurate, whatever that means. I don't understand what that... Maybe, like, no... How? I don't How know. How is it accurate? Know. I don't know because this the games have never had a story. They ain't gonna fight once. So it'll be just story the underground stuff that goes on, like with M. Bison. He's a drug lord. Yeah. Do you remember that movie? That was terrible. Jean Claude Van Damme. They just shoved all they could. Yeah. American guy, Jean Claude Van Damme, French. It's like that doesn't make any sense. Why is the None. French guy American? None. No sense. No. Uh, PC game Flashback is coming to Nintendo Switch. Do you remember this game? I do. It was on the Super Nintendo, yeah. I think. Kind of like, had that uh, out-of-this-world vibe. Yeah. I remember the guy had the, the little square yeah. thing on his eye. Yeah. So I was kind of hoping this will show up somewhere else. If the Switch is getting it. Uh, Banner Saga series is also confirmed for Nintendo Switch. They're getting everything here lately. They are. But it's a lot of older games, so. It is, but it gives some it gives you something to play and another reason to buy it. So exactly. I think they're being smart by trying to get that stuff. Mm-hmm. Capybara's long-announced game Below, which they announced back in 2013, is finally looking to release this year on Xbox One and PC. 
Took them five years. Good for them. Yeah, who is who's Capybara? Capybara. I don't know them. I don't know either. Uh, and finally, Gun Media is ag- adding a ticket system to Friday the Thirteenth that will hopefully balance who gets to play Jason and who gets to play as a counselor based on their preference. So apparently, it's like this from what I read. Say I've got my preference. I want to be Jason. Right. You know that's that's what I would prefer to play when I play. Right. I'm gonna get. Say that the the ticket system, if you have no preference, is maybe like ten. Hypothetically, mm-hmm. if I want to be Jason, it's gonna give me twenty tickets. Now, once I get to play as him, one ticket is removed, or a bunch of those tickets are removed temporarily. Right. You know, to give other people a chance, and then I'll get my tickets back at some point. That way, the balance of it, who gets to play, is a little bit more yeah. uh, leveled out. I guess, you, and you can also kind of see the matchmaking process. Yeah. Or I guess how it just selects who it is. Yeah. But what if you're in there and everybody in the in the thing has exactly the same number of tickets as you? Then, well, no, I don't think it'll work it's, like that. It's gonna freeze up when you first jump in a in a room. You could. I'm sure they've got it. It'll out. freeze up and break the game. I don't understand. I don't. They'll figure it out. They'll flip a coin. There's flip a coin. A coin that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> All right. Next news is uh, THQ Nordic announced a partnership with Nickelodeon to revive games based on the network's most popular kids shows. Not much is known or was actually elaborated during this announcement, based on a comment from Nickelodeon senior VP John Roman. This sounds like they will actually re-release older games, not make new ones based on those shows. You think Legend of Korra will be on there? Well, this seemed to be like the 90s shows, like Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life. I would and, so play a Ren and Stimpy game. You know, a lot of those games. But, again, they didn't make it clear. Because it, it, the way their, their, their comments came off was like, you know, people who played these games way back when... They loved them. They they enjoyed them. They have so many memories, and we want to bring that back to them. Yeah. But there's also a hint like they're going to make new ones based on those oh, or do. something like that. So I'm not quite sure what that is yet. So again, we'll we'll update you when we know absolutely what they're doing. The uh, next story I have is with the world of video game becoming seemingly more and more toxic. A number of companies in the industry have joined together to form the Fair Play Alliance, which is described as a cross-industry initiative spanning over 30 game companies whose mission is to foster fair play in online games, raise awareness of player behavior-related issues, and share research and best practices that drive lasting change. In essence, they hope to be able to better understand and identify instances of racism, sexism, and other forms of trolling and deal with it accordingly. Since different cultures and societal norms pervade the gaming world, the coalition hopes to devise a better method to combat this behavior more effectively. Do you think that'll work? Man, who who can tell? You know? Yeah. I guess at least they're doing something. Yeah, and there was there was actually a decent amount of uh, companies behind it. Yeah. And it's not just big companies; it's big and small. So. Right. Hopefully, they'll they'll work out some kind of way to figure out a way to, to cut down on this because internet trolling it's yeah it's how old. do you stop that yeah it's it's. I mean I'll, I'll give credit to you know moderators I see on Twitch you know they're on the ball when a troll comes in it's like you're gone and they just kind of keep knocking them out but at some point I mean what are you going to do if they just keep coming back with new accounts and all that stuff I mean some that's that's one of the things I feel like it's got to be done you've yeah. got to figure out how to identify who these people are and cut them out completely there's got to be a way you know mm. and i think that's why sony hadn't done the whole change your name because they've got to do something <clears throat> better than uh microsoft so they probably try to do it for free or try to pick a price but like if you paid money you could get a name mm-hmm. go troll somebody pay a little bit more get another name keep trolling you know so how do you stop that too as long yeah. as you have money some people just like to do that. They'll go buy a new thing every day. Mm. I don't know. All right. Next story I've got is Behavior Digital announced its big plans for Dead by Daylight to sub- celebrate its third year. It's hard to believe it's been three years. Yeah, I know. Their roadmap consists of a few interesting items like a progression system to unlock survivors and killers that are currently purchasable D- DLC. 
So if you don't have Michael Myers or Freddy or whatever, you could work your butt off and earn them. Nice. Uh, along with cosmetic items for you, uh, for your character that you can uh, can be earned in the same way. They're not going to actually give you any kind of benefits. So just mm-hmm. change your look. And I don't know if they really said that that was uh, just for survivors or for killers as well. Because I think that would be nice, especially for some of the original killers. Yeah. I think that would be pretty interesting. Uh, a better ranking system will also uh, be added or implemented that will be a little bit more rewarding than it is now. Oh, yeah. It's re- not rewarding at all, it feels yeah. like. Uh, an anti-cheat reinforcement. Tutorials to help with any newbies that come to the game. And lastly, the stuff everyone's looking forward to. Four new maps, four new survivors, and four new killers. Nice. So, what do you think in the way of killers? Do you think they will actually bring in just established, popular killers from from horror movies? Or do you think they'll actually do something unique? I don't know. Because... What about Mr. Boogie? Hmm? He'd be a good one. Yeah. I was actually thinking about this one the other day. I think this one would actually fit in pretty well. What about uh, Victor Crowley from oh, yeah, uh, we, Hatchet? Yeah, I think Mean talked about that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, he'd he would be, be perfect he'd fit on in. there. Uh, I don't really know of any... Because I was trying to think of, of killers that would just, I don't know, really fit the mood and the atmosphere that yeah. they kind of add in, but none really kind of stood yeah. out. you know. Because when you think of somebody like Chucky... He wouldn't work. No. Because the whole, you know, putting him on the meat hook and all that stuff, it, I don't really see how that would work. And if you did something like the ghost face killer from Scream, it could work to a point, but, eh, you know, what what kind of abilities would this person have? Yeah. They're just a nut. Maybe run fast and yeah. he could just kill you. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, there's nothing to it. And watch you bleed out. All right. Uh, rumors. I only had one this week. Which was... Just one rumor. Wow, I really dug. I was just like... It's this weird all? that I have never had a GDC to where something good didn't get announced. No, oh, this nothing was a very really... quiet week. Yeah. Uh, the only rumor I got was Assassin's Creed for 2019 will be set in Greece. Meh. Uh, I mean, it would be an interesting locale. Yeah, it's Assassin's but, Creed, though. Come on, Assassin's we've Creed. played those games. I know. But the locale is enough for me to go... Okay. Yeah, everybody said that about Egypt, too. Well, see, I liked, uh, what was it, Syndication, where they were in London. I, I really liked, liked the, the layout there. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool, I guess. I liked, I still like Part 3. Everybody hates that one, but I like I it. Part 3. Part yeah. 3 was a good one. Connor was cool. All right, weird news. Weird news. I don't have any uh, to match last week's. No, last week was pretty weird. Luigi penis news. I seen that. I seen it. They had like, <laughs> they had like a mushroom on its packer. I really hope that everyone went out there and looked for that because that's just I never hear if anyone yeah. heard that stuff. But yeah, it's out there. All right. First bit of weird news is Puma is teaming up with Sega to bring you the shoes that you never knew you wanted. <laughs> Yeah, I I still don't know I don't want them. The RS Zero Sonic. How much do they cost? There's no telling. I didn't see that. I don't know. When are they coming out? I don't know. I don't know. What do they look like? They look like a pile of blue turds. I don't know. You hadn't seen them? No, because I didn't see them because when I saw them, they were blurred out like a big Sonic blue blur, you know? That's what it is. It's just a big blur of yeah. Shoe? It looks digitized. I'm just want, well. That's what I took it as. That's what the shoe is. That's dumb. Yeah, it looked like. But I think that was the whole purpose for the marketing. Is like it's supposed to be a big blue blur. Yeah, let me see if I was wrong. Anyway, it's stupid. Uh, <laughs> you know why haven't they released like if if you're gonna do something like that and release shoes based on Sonic, why not his his running shoes, the red shoes with the white? Yeah, for real. I exactly. Mean, that, that seems like that would be ideal. Then you have Sonic shoes. I don't know. What do I know? I'm, I'm not the marketing genius around here. All right. Uh, next bit of weird news is in the Netherlands, police apprehended four people linked to drug trafficking. News like this is fairly common, but their methods of shipping drugs is why I'm bringing it up in the first place. Do you hear that, everybody? Sega! He looked up that damn video yeah. just to see the big blue I wanna, blurs. I want to say it's that's what it looks like. It's That's the shoes. But they're they're just blurring it. There's more to that shoe, and they're probably so damn ugly they don't want to show it. Let me get back to my story. You, since do you had thing. to interrupt. You I'm sorry for interrupting. Sega. Sega. Say it. Sega. Sega. Uh. Oh well, yeah. Uh. The 
group in question that were arrested for drug trafficking, unless you forgot during the Sega interruption, uh, had been using three a 3D printer to manufacture replicas of old NES cartridges, then hiding drugs inside of them and shipping them off. Oh God, I wonder if I bought one. I've, there's some games I haven't played. I wonder if I bought it. Oh, you want to you want to hear it? this? You'll love this. There was actually a story a few months back, very similar to this. Someone was shipping out contraband spiders. Oh, hell no. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. God, I've seen somebody buying one at Petco the other day, and I just wanted to smack it out of his hand. He was like, oh, it's so cute. I'm like, what is wrong no, with you? No, no, it's no. It's a fucking tarantula. Yeah. No I way. to drop no the F-bomb there. <laughs> it's okay. You're talking about something you, you don't really care for, yeah. so it, it's fine. Last bit of weird news, and it's not really weird. Uh, it's just kind of it's something that's got everybody frustrated, and I can understand the frustration. But at the same time, I'm frustrated it's just, like, just waiting yeah. for the story. Game <laughs> gamers trying out Sea of Thieves this week were a little disappointed to find out that the Kraken featured in the game is not all there, nah. so to speak. The so, game is not all there, really. I yeah, it was like, at first, I wasn't really sure what they were talking about. It's like, you don't get to see the Kraken, okay, so you're just fighting on the boat, and that's it. So you're just seeing tentacles, and that's it. No, they, somebody jumped in the water, and all it was was just tentacles. There's no body attached to this Kraken in the water, so they're just like, well, that's disappointing. And I can I can see, I yeah. can see, I can totally see the disappointment why, but at the same time, there are what, what game have you not played and you ran behind everything and you yeah. seen like oh god I went behind the curtain I want to do that you know of course I know that there was a I think there was something in I want to say it was Witcher 3 like when you're out on the boats uh-huh. and there's a there's a big fish or something out there that or it's a whale no it's a, it's a whale and it'll just kind of ride up by, beside you or something yeah. like that one time it happened I was like I'm jumping I'm going to see that whale I jump in and it's gone I'm like, well, what the hell was that? Yeah, it just, it's a magic whale. I wanted to whale. see the whale. So, magic whale. I guess it's just one of those things. Well, I think that game is No Man's Sky. You think so? I think so. You haven't heard anything good? Uh, it's they're, Everybody's complaining about it. It's not, it's not a It's not what they game. were expecting? It's exactly what everybody was excited for No Man's Sky. Mm-hmm. And it's not what all, you know, there's like one enemy you can fight. Oh, it's like so dip, it's but bare just, bones, not yeah, everything that they... Funny enough, it's a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like different colors. You know, that was one of the complaints. Mm-hmm. Needs more enemies. The Kraken wasn't all there was another one. Um, the You know, the fighting's okay, but it's kind of one-shot kind of thing. But yeah. I guess somebody said it was like 10% complete. So yeah. they're probably going to add to it later, but at this point... Does this warrant buying a Microsoft Game Pass? Maybe. And when it... But when at it, least with the Game Pass, you're not spending 60 bucks on the, the game. So at least well, that that's giving you a, a chance to kind of feel the ground and say, do I really want this? No? Okay. Yeah, but like that, now... But you've you know, got saying, other games to play. <laughs> but that now you, get, you start going, okay, now every game that comes here is crap because they don't want to take a chance on it. Well, we'll see how that works, though. Yeah. I guess so. That just shows what... Uh, what uh, Microsoft is doing there with their little rare company. That's what I've heard that this could be like a model of things that come with like even with Crackdown 3. You know, like what if they start, they start going to, you know, they're going to hear like, we want to crack down 3. When's it coming out? When's it mm. coming out? Are they going to cave under the pressure and go ahead and drop it and it's not even done? But this, you know, well, it's Crackdown 3. You said you want to crack down 3. Yeah. Yeah, Here we want go. the game you showed us, you know. Don't, don't give me when. half the game. Give me the whole game. Yeah. That's why I will wait until uh, was Insomniac is ready to drop Spider-Man. You can drop it whenever you want. Yeah. As long as you've given me the best Spider-Man I can ever play, right. take your time. That game I'll will wait be done. For it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It'll be this year, I think. Oh, yeah. I hope so. Okay. Uh, I've got a topic this week, and I had to, to kind of go over a few, trying to figure out what would be a good topic to talk about this week. And I wish we'd have had an actual streamer here. I wish we'd had a guest for this one. but. Right. I just figured, what the hell, it's hot in the news, and I really don't want to bring this guy up, because I'm... (laughs) Anyway. Uh, Logan Paul, fucking (laughs) douchebag, recently announced that he is hopping over to Twitch. I don't think he's he's dropping his YouTube page. Right. He's just finding his next money train. He's partnering with Twitch, like he was with YouTube, I guess. 
So he's going to try to cash in on the, the whole Fortnite craze. You know, after what's his name? There was a, a Twitch streamer last week or so that uh, got real popular playing Fortnite and had yeah. Drake watching him and all that. It was a big story. I didn't feel like it was worth covering. No, no. It's but not, it that's happened. not a big story. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. You know? It's not a story. But, no. Hey, Drake watched me. Did you just say Drake? <laughs> Woo! Drake. Drake. Now, I'm sure this is a way for him to find a new source of income, like I said, since his YouTube reputation has been tainted, but he's still got millions of followers who mm-hmm. just love him dearly and think he does no wrong. I just want to punch him in his face. I want to punch him in his face, man. We'll call him. You ever looked man? at his face? No. I'm, he's got a punchable face. Hey, I just, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know why. It's just, it's one of those things. You see a face and it's like, you deserve this right in there. It's just perfect. I, mean, I don't even care about him. Like, he's I don't the, even. Like, he's, he's the putz. one that did the, the film The Dead Body, yeah. right? Yeah, he's pretty much he's yeah, that the douchebag that did all that crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he screwed YouTube up for everybody else. Yeah. And <laughs> funny enough, despite him not actually have streamed yet on the channel, he's already got like two hundred thousand followers well that's real cool yeah great so i'm sure he's already got his partnering and thing lined up oh, he he's affiliated up. already he had that sure. lined up before he even got there anyway when the news hit many uh, users from twitch felt like this is going to be a bad idea believing that he will bring his toxicity to twitch and taint the platform based on his past and present behavior my question is do you agree that he will hurt the platform and other streamers on it or do you think it's good for twitch I think Twitch thinks they're making a good move. And I don't know. I just, I guess it remains to be seen how he acts. Mm -hmm. Surely to God, he's learned something, you know? I could see his chat being very volatile. Oh, yeah. There's going to be so many people there. Yeah. Because you're going to have to be a chat, really. You're going to have his fans watching. Right. And they're going to be, you know, telling him he's so perfect in every single way whatsoever. But, you know, I, I could almost see him being one of those people that's not really going to pay attention to chat. Yeah, he's not. You know, it's he just going to be like, eh. He won't be able to. There'll be too many people there. Yeah. And then you're going to see troll fights and stuff like that. You're going to have people that love him, people that hate him, and they're just going to argue the whole time. Yeah. So I guarantee you his, his chat will be volatile. Oh, yeah. No doubt. On the flip side of this, and I, again, I don't want to talk in his favor because I'm not, I don't care for him, but... Perhaps his being on the platform could bring more eyes to it. That's what it's going to do. I'm pretty I sure. would I would at least look at that as a positive in a, in a way. I don't. I mean, I I don't want to see his brand of toxicity swarming Twitch. And it's not like it doesn't already exist there in some right. form. Like you've got those people who just want to be dicks, right? So I don't think this is just going to elevate them to a whole another level. Like there's just a swarm of it, and it's like, oh, they're all here now. Yeah, my but army. I, I feel like that it will bring more eyes to Twitch versus taking away from. You know, I I don't feel like it'll hurt it in that that regard. If no, people are not familiar so. with it by now, I feel like bringing someone like him to it will bring more attention to it. So the platform is bringing more people in. I think also with Twitch, they've been pretty strict, man. You do anything wrong that like you're done. Yeah, I, I saw. Mean, they, they've laid that down pretty early. I actually saw, and this was actually a, a conversation I had with somebody the other day. They showed me a picture of a streamer that got, I guess, suspended mm-hmm. for something she was wearing. Right. And it was just like, are you kidding me? She was not wearing anything provocative at all. Right. It just showed a little bit of cleavage. And I'm not talking like, you know, a little tank top or something like that and her boobs are hanging out. It's just like that little cut right in the shirt. Man. And they she got she got suspended because someone reported her. And I feel like they need to get on the ball with that. Yeah. Because that's ridiculous. Yeah. She didn't do anything wrong. Give she me was a wearing uniform. clothes you could wear out in public. Right. I think that's what they need to, to set their guidelines at is like how provocative are we talking here? Sometimes the camera is you're just no matter what you wear is gonna look like that for women. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like if they've got it on top of the thing, it's gonna kinda of shine down. But I mean even hers was kind of straightforward, so right. I don't I don't know. It was ridiculous. So they still need to get their act together. I don't feel like like you said, it remains to be seen with him. I don't, I, I don't want to look at it from a negative perspective completely because I feel like there could be a benefit in a way, not maybe from him specifically, 
but maybe his presence will bring more people to it. You know what right. I'm saying? So maybe try to look at it from that perspective. But yes, I do understand the the frustrations that people are feeling, especially stro- small streamers. Because when you got these big guys coming in and kind of shoehorning into your stuff, because I mean that even happened on YouTube in some way. If you think about it, I mean you had YouTube creators doing all their stuff and and trying to to make a name for themselves, and then suddenly you get networks coming in, starting up channels for their late night talk shows and doing videos and they're getting top billing every, you know, right. top front page trending and all that stuff. And you can't compete with that. No, they're established. Right. So I understood that frustration. Yeah. It's it all of a sudden it makes Twitch not what it's set out to be. Yeah. It, it's all of a sudden about more about the money than it is about the people that, you know, make it operate. Yeah. And the, the communities on Twitch, a lot of the, the smaller ones, I feel like they could grow into bigger communities they could be a lot more and they could really set a positive example. But something like this could really hurt that yeah. in a manner of speaking. Yeah, it's like having Walmart move into, you know, on Main Street. Yeah. And it takes out all the little businesses. So, like I said, it remains to be seen. We'll see. People out there, what do you think? Leave comments like you never do. Yeah, I'm being <laughs> salty. I even wonder if you hear my saltiness. I hear it. I know you do. All right, release dates. We only got one day. Everything's coming out this week, which is surprising. Well, no, no, no. Uh-uh. If you pre-ordered Major League Baseball, it comes out today. Well, don't you owe me? Excuse me. I don't owe you. Well, I well, it's on do. the list. It's just not. I didn't put pre-ordered. I'm gonna go pick it up today. Okay, well, fine. <laughs> March twenty seventh, we have the Alliance Alive for 3ds, Altier Lighty, and Suell. The Alchemist and the Mysterious Painting. That's just what I should have called it in the first place. Uh, PS4, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Far Cry 5 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Are you getting it? I really, really want to. But, again, we just had that discussion of too many games, and I just don't want to add another one on it. So I'm, I'm debating. I'm just like, I really do. But, Are you getting God of War? Again. <laughs> that's day one for me. That's, that's I keep... Rolling around in my head like, I really want these, but I just, I, I can't justify it right now. Yes, you with, can. With all the other games that are war? out there. Are you kidding me? I, tr- I know. I, trust me, I know. <laughs> oh my God, you just lost five points. No, I don't. And then, of course, MLB The Show 2018. Thank you. Got Aaron Judge on the front of it. Mm-hmm. You know, there. I'm, I'm not a fan of this game, obviously, because I've never, yeah. I don't care for baseball. But I will tell you. If, if I had the opportunity to watch Twitch more often, uh, I would be looking forward to Mammoth streaming this and the return of Big Willie English. Big Willie English. Yeah, Big uh, Willie. Ain't that the guy he created? Yeah. And his... Uh, I mean, that was, that was fun times when I, when I was watching the, the Willie English. Because it was just... It's like a baseball game. I guess you would when you go, you're just sitting there with your friends, you're watching the game, you're just chit-chatting, talking, and whatnot, and it was a good time. Yeah. So I want to say I want to go back and hang out with you know Willie English. So Willie English was the player on the game, or was he yeah. was Mammoth being Willie English? Well, he was he was the the guy he was playing. Okay, he was in the game. Right, Road to the Show. That's right. Yeah. Okay, are you ready for today's review? I am. You told me that I would like this game. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm ready for you to convince me. You have to convince me. Is it on PC? Right now it is. Uh, but I do recall hearing that it could be on other platforms like later PS4? on. PS4? Possibly. Okay. They All just right. said working on getting it to other consoles. Okay. You convinced me I'm, I'm going to buy it. <clears throat> so. You have five minutes. Go. Five minutes? I think this is a little bit longer than five you minutes. You have five I go, minutes. I go deep. <laughs> Balls deep. Balls deep. After almost two solid months of playing Monster Hunter, I knew that there would be a time that I would walk away from this game you know, after putting in, I think I'm up at 200 hours. <laughs> God, damn. that's yeah. like Mad I was surprised Max for me. Looking at that, I was like, "Damn, I haven't played it that much." Okay. I played Mad Max like 214 yeah. hours. But even before I did, I dabbled in other games that really not, didn't keep my attention for long enough. And it, you know, I never put the game down completely. I'd always come back to it. Mm-hmm. Now that changed this week when I decided to give Regions of Ruin a try. Wasn't sure what to make of it at first since I hadn't heard much about it and I could always be a little apprehensive when I'm trying a new IP. 
Even upon playing it for the first 30 minutes, had I not pushed through just a bit further, I think I would have put it down and missed out on something very entertaining. First, a few details. The, the game was officially released on PC back on February 5th. It's developed by Vox and published by uh, po- uh, Poisky. I hope I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. Poisky Productions. Uh, it's a 2D side-scrolling platforming RPG slash town builder, which that's kind of what I would describe it as based on what I saw. And they even described it as, in their own marketing, as Elder Scrolls meets Kingdom. Do you know what Kingdom is? Yeah. Kingdom is a kingdom building simulation. <laughs> Well, as long as it's not like the, I guess like on the, your your uh, cell phone when you're playing one of those town building things. Mm-hmm. I hate when you have to click on it and you have to wait two and a half hours. For no, something it's to be nothing done. like that. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I even heard some other guy call it medieval Terraria. Okay, Terraria is so, pretty cool. Now, having played none of these, I really had nothing to compare it to for myself. Despite that, I think that was a plus since I had no preconceived notions on what the game should be. Now, what is the game? Let's start with the basics of the story. After a war between humans and centaurs, dwarves, 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 I said that dwarves, shunned the world and locked themselves away in the mountains for centuries. Eventually, the doors opened and the dwarves found themselves in a world that they knew, but it had changed. With humans and centaurs now being extinct and all of their prosperity in ruin, and a world ravaged ravaged by goblins, lich, and kobold. If you don't know what they are, they're the enemies you'll fight, right. along with trolls and other creatures. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Though they fought valiantly to reclaim the lands, dwarves were enslaved and exiled to the surface world, away from their home and their heritage. Despite this setback, dwarves continue to fight to reclaim what is theirs, and all hope rests on one hero to unite the scattered masses and restore their kingdom. And that's you, the hero. Me? Yes, you, if you're playing. Now, when you start the game, you meet a fellow traveler who has busted a wheel on his wagon. The traveler will ask you for some help to find some wood and help fix the wheel. Did he hit a hole? Uh, I don't really think you see the the hole. Probably a rock. Those rocks, man, they just... Devastate your wagon. Mm -hmm. Now, you're kind of treated in this area with a tutorial. Everything, uh, well, let me rephrase that. Almost everything you'll kind of need to know will be presented here. I'd say with the most basic of ideas, you'll get to know everything as far as combat and collecting will happen within this area. So they'll tell you how to move, what your buttons are, combat, collecting. All this is very helpful to get your feet wet early on since... It covers a lot of ground in the first few minutes. Now, obviously, there's more to it than that, but what you get here is a great starting point. This is also the point where it laid out um, a control, or where actually I laid out a control scheme that was comfortable for me because I was playing with a keyboard. Mm -hmm. And I kind of felt like that it would be better with a controller, but I didn't try it yet. Because the way it, it, some of the controls, the way they were laid out, I felt like if I just had a button here and a button here and if everything was just a, in a controller form, it would really work much better than what I was using. So I still need to try it. I couldn't find my cord to plug in my controller, so right. I, I didn't get a chance to do it. <clears throat> but anyway, while searching for the wood in the uh, woods... In the woods. In the woods. You encounter goblins, learn your basic combat moves. You also learn about damage in the game, which I I feel like is a very clever way they did damage. You don't have, you know, your basic health bar like you do in most games. In this game, whatever you're wearing, armor, can protect you from damage. But how you get damaged, it can be a number of things. You can go into battle and first hit, you could break an arm. Next hit, you break a leg. And they detail all the injuries that you have so you could say you have a sprained ankle Mm -hmm. laceration in your back you know you've broken a rib just various little things like that and whatever these uh afflictions are will hinder you like one of the things that happened to me uh fairly early on is i sprained my ankle Mm -hmm. and there was a, a like a ledge i was trying to jump to i couldn't jump to it because i had that injury right so the injuries will slow you down prevent you from doing all we know what you need to do so you either have to heal yourself with uh, bandages that you can make or then you can jump <clears throat> yeah okay. but it's not a guarantee you at least have to heal that particular wound right but it will help 
uh, or you can go back to your settlement, which I'll get to in a bit. Now, when fighting the goblins, you will come across uh, a dwarf in a cage that happens to be a physician. Once you rescue him, he will join you and the traveler that you're trying to help. Once you return to the traveler with the wood, you three will set out to an area right for the taking. And this is where you will set up your settlement. You begin by building a campfire, which will allow you to level up once you earn skill points and whatnot, and just like in a regular uh, RPG. Right. I couldn't think of the word. I couldn't it's think hard. Of the, yeah, I just couldn't get there. <clears throat> I can't read. I don't remember what was that. Oh. Uh, your friends will suggest that you find more dwarves to help scavenge for more material and build more structures for your settlement to help it grow. With this information, you must go out into the untamed wilds and find more material and find more dwarves. You will open a map to locate areas in which to travel, and at the beginning it looks like a giant white canvas, like you can't see anything. Right. So you must explore the map, which will allow you to flesh it out, and you can uh, see where you can travel on right. the map. To do that, you have like uh, food rations, which is essentially everything that you'll collect. You know, you can go through, kill rabbits, and, and collect them from trees. It just look like apples, but it'll gotcha. add to your food supply. Then you can select an area on the map, which you can open up using a certain amount of food, depending on how far you want to go from your camp. Right. So it's like if you're real close to your camp and you just want to open up that area so you can see it, it'll be a small amount. If you go way the hell up away from it, it's going to be a larger amount of food. Gotcha. So you have to figure out what it's worth to you and where you need to look. But once you flesh it out, you'll kind of see, you know, little icons, which you can travel. It'll be tree icon, house icon, a tower icon, and all these kind of give you an idea as to what you're up against there. If it's a, a house, you're probably looking at like a settlement of some kind. Forest, it's just a forest. If right. it's a fortress, you're probably going to encounter a lot of enemy fire, so to speak. Now, there are a lot of numerous locations you can come across. Swarms of enemies, desolate campsites, uh, like I said, the dwarven, other dwarven settlements. You can help them out if they have uh, jobs for you to do. Maybe there's a, a group of goblins nearby who are harassing them, so they'll, you can go out there and attack them, kill them, and you come back, and they'll give you money for it and say thank you. Now you can help. If they have a farm, I think there was a guy I rescued once at a cotton farm. Right. You can bring your people there, and they can harvest the cotton from that area. Well, how, what's the combat like? It's just a basic kind of hack and slash. Right. But some of the enemies will have uh, shields and armor that they can block. <clears throat> so your basic attacks won't work. So you'll have to kind of go in and do like a heavy hit. So right. it's like a charged attack. And then you sw swing down like that. Uh -huh. Creates a critical hit. And it's pretty strong depending on how, you know, you beefed up your combat. And then when you get through, it's like, okay, well, you made it through this and you didn't get hurt at all. Yeah. I mean, you well, hurt your foot. I mean, if you, if you do get injured, depending on again what your armor's like because your armor I, the armor that i'm wearing right now it seems to protect me from just about anything right not to say that i can't get hurt but it takes a while for them to print it, penetrate my armor because that's another thing too is your armor can get damaged as well right so you're out on the field say you go from you know camp to camp to camp and you haven't gone back yet to re, you know repair your armor your armor is going to get damaged to the point where they're actually going to be able to break through it and start injuring you more than okay. what you were that's pretty cool. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So it definitely gives you incentive to make sure that your armor and your health is up to par. Because if you don't feel like you can take it, you're probably not going to be able to. No. So you, you need to definitely kind of think that through. Now, uh, I think that the uh, the map area, or at least the way they've kind of laid out some of the areas, that's a, the other thing I want to talk about, is when you go into one of these areas, it's kind of like a set length. Almost like a, a little level. So it's not like you walk into an area and it's just, you know, one big open world. It's like a, a set, you know, beginning to end. Kind of like, think uh, Zelda 2, but I guess larger in scale. Just just more like in the, the layout. So Almost you, like it's its own little level. Yes. So okay. you come in there, depending on where you're at, say you're in a, say you found a settlement. So you'll see a house. You might see a guy standing outside and he'll say, hey, I've got these guys that are bugging me or whatever. He'll tell you who you are. You can have conversations with them. And then you can go find whatever enemies are in the area to that are harassing him. Take them down. Go back to him. Collect. And then that area is open up. 
Nice. So all these areas that you go to will be areas that you can har- harvest from. You know, whether right. it be wood, food, cotton, ores. You know, there's there's a tremendous amount of things you can harvest. That's cool. Uh, animal skins. Always animal skins. So, and another thing I found very interesting, kind of using Zelda 2 as, uh, I guess, an idea for how the levels work. You know, when you got to that, you get to one end and you just walk out and that was it. Right. Okay. And there would be times that I would walk into a level and I'd turn right around and walk right out and it'd piss me off because I was like, I wasn't ready to leave. So you're <laughs> kind of screwed on that. Right. Level design, the way they kind of did this is when you're getting ready to exit, the screen starts to go darker. So it's indicating to you, hey, you're about to, to exit. So right. if you don't want to go any farther, turn back around. So it it's not like it just darkens and then, oh, you're out. It waits. It's like it goes to full black. Okay, and cool. then you you exit. So you've got a lot of time to sit there and decide, do I want to exit or not? Yeah. Because wait. there are times you can see like a gold piece just sitting right out of reach. And it's like, can I get that before I exit? <laughs> I just don't want to get it. get it. Yeah, I've got it. So I really think that was a smart design choice so you can know where your boundaries are, where your borders are. Because, again, when you, when you start, you've got left or right. You can go. And nine times out of ten, from what I've seen, right is the way to go. Right. But sometimes there's something left, and I always like to make sure before I just say, well, there's nothing over here. I'm just going to go this way. So it's good to, to have that option and, and be able to kind of look around at what you're doing. Now, when you've uh, cleared an area, your icon is uh, initially white to tell you that you're actually, when it's done, I'm sorry. If it's a black icon, like a dark black icon, you've, uh, you're either there or you have been there and not cleared everything out. Right. Because there have been times that I had to go into an area and I had to turn back around because I wasn't ready for it. Right. Like a barrage of enemies that were just way too tough. Uh, but if you've never been there, it's like a faded black icon on the map. So you'll know, okay, this is a place I need to go. And if there's anything that you have learned through your travels uh, back in your settlement about any particular area, say, you know, you run into someone and they say, hey, there's this, there's this wizard that's terrorizing, you know, the, the area. But he's not in that area. If you find an icon nearby, they'll say, hey, there's this guy who's telling me about this wizard. That's where you know he's at. So right. it kind of gives you a direction as to which that's way to cool. go. So I think that's that's a smart way to go about it as well. Now, when traveling, it's always good to come back to your settlement to see what you can add and improve upon. Now, like I said, it's kind of a town builder, so you're not just out and about. Now, my playthrough, I have actually built in my town, I've got a tavern, a trading post, a market, a blacksmith forge, a refinery, an apothecary. Apo- did I say that right? Apothecary, know. where you where you do the the healing. Yeah, that sounds like. And a library. Uh, I don't know if there's any more stuff to be built because nothing has shown up, but I still have icons showing a building can be made. So I don't know if there's right. something going to be added later, or if I just need to get to a certain point where I can build something new. I don't know. So. I'm kind of curious about that to see if anything else will be added in or whatnot. But uh, while you're there, you or after you get them built, you can actually upgrade them to allow even more growth in your town. So it can mean like uh, if you get a better campfire, you have like a larger range of your mapping. So like I was telling you before, you use your food to kind of clean off your map, so to speak. Right. It's like a small little icon about like that. If you kind of open it up, it gets larger so you can get more area covered with less food okay so it's, that's definitely a key thing to do up front uh you can also like uh, your uh campfire or not your campfire your refinery you get better ores you can make trading post you can bring in uh better traders who are going to have like the real rare weapons and armor right. that you really need so it's always good to do that and that's where your uh townspeople going to scavenge comes in handy because when you go onto your map there's a little icon down at the bottom left hand corner you can open that up it shows you all the places you've been that you can harvest from and then you can just select whoever you want to go out there and harvest that stuff so that's one less thing you've got to worry about and then they'll come back and then once that area is either you've got too much like you can hold no more in your storage or they've harvested everything they'll just stop and then you just got to redistribute them wherever you need them okay so, with all that, you'll see what you can do. You can see what you can upgrade, and you can just 
I don't know, kick it up a notch and, and try to really build your town up. Because once you really kind of get that understanding down, right, you can start to make a lot of progress really quick. And that's that's one of the things I didn't quite figure out at first. But once I started realizing what I could do, especially the upgrading, because I had like limited storage, I'm like, well, there's got to be more ways I can store more stuff. Right. And then once I started learning how to upgrade my storage, I was like, all right, now we're getting somewhere, you know? But uh, anyway, speaking of the weapons and armor, you can find plenty of this stuff on your travels, and most of it is pretty basic stuff. You know, you'll find hats, shields, swords, axes, hammers, whatever, and even little trinkets like rings and necklaces that'll, like, boost your stats. <coughs> now, I was inclined early on to dismantle some of this stuff at a forge, but the farther I got in it, I actually began hoarding this stuff because you can just sell that stuff off. Everybody else is going to take care of everything you need scavenging-wise. Right. Save your stuff, sell it, get better equipment because that's what's going to help you survive. Uh, another element that helped me early on was a game offered by the owner of the tavern. It's a very basic mining game that I didn't feel like had much of a point at first, but once I learned how to boost the mechanics in the game, it led to higher production in the game, and it unlocked like uh, special bonus things for my for my uh, town. Right. So it's like a little card game, at least the way it works. There's the ore that you're after. You mine it clean it or mine it chug it explore it yeah i'm lost refine it uh i'm trying to remember exactly because there was there's four actions that you do you you find the ore you refine it or you mine it refine it and then you have it right i think that's the best way to put it i hope i did that right <laughs> now what i didn't know is i mean you're sitting there just pressing all these buttons going okay okay Okay, this is... Huh. Okay. And you're done. But, I mean, and you're just sitting there clicking on this stuff, just earning it. So, again, I'm sitting there looking at it. It's like, what is the point in this? And then I started looking around. There's a little trophy uh, icon to the uh, left-hand side. And if you look in it, it says if you collect X amount of everything, there's a bonus for your town. Right. So, it could be a bonus for... Um, how many how much storage you can have or a bonus for uh discounts on your on your trade so you get like 50 percent off of any weapon or armor at a trader and i was like okay well that's, that's i want that so how do i do this so i started looking through this game and i was like this is gonna take forever to do what they're asking but then i learned if you go the bottom right hand corner card upgrades or allows you to upgrade what you're doing right and I added a miner and an explorer, and all this stuff suddenly started doing it by itself. And I was like, okay. So now That's I don't have do to it. click anything anymore. You hired it, some people. Yeah, and it started moving on its own very slowly. But then I started collecting more, and I started adding more, and it just became more and more and more until the numbers were just skyrocketing off. Right. And then before I knew it, I had every one of those trophies like that, and I was like, ha! <laughs> Got you. Yeah. So now I had all this bonus stuff to help me get through my journeys. And I was like, that was awesome. I'm glad I found that. <laughs> because, it, again, it, you it's something you would easily dismiss early on. It's like, what is the point in this? But when you see what it can bring to you, it's well worth it. So don't skip that up if you have. Definitely try that out. Now, speaking of the tavern as well, you can uh, as it upgrades, you can hire fellow warriors to accompany you on your... Uh, missions and even take some extra bounties uh, on a bounty board once you upgrade it to a certain thing you can take bounties and you can get extra money which is very good for high dollar equipment because you can get some good money some off good some bounties. Money. Good, good money. money good money a lot better than some of that other stuff but it's it's definitely something you need to look into if you need money quick you can also find book pages that are added to your compendium that gives you insight and backstory to the world. Uh, you also have a journal that uh, keeps records of everything important you've done in the game. So if you anything that you have done that they consider important, whether it's killed something, built something, whatever, right. it's going to be in your journal. So if you right. ever have any questions, there it is. Right there. Go look through your journal. Additionally, upon my travels, I came across uh, dwarves that speak of ancient runes, of which I have found and activated a few, but as of right now, I'm not sure what their exact purpose is, so I'm intrigued by this mystery. I found one yesterday called Scooby. that I pressed one and activated, and then platforms moved into place to help me get to a treasure chest, so I was like, okay, something's going on here. 
Uh, I feel like I've covered so many elements in the game that I'm going to either have glossed over something or forgotten something completely, which I don't want to do. So I'm, I'm really trying to remember things. Uh, it has a kind of 16-bit style with a more 8-bit style character design, if you right. kind of follow that. Uh, but it looks fantastic. It's uh, With a game like that, with the type of look, one would assume that the music would kind of be that 8-bit kind of... Not at all. The music here is almost like a very... You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the music here is like a step above. It's like a sweeping orchestral epic that elevates the game to a whole other level that makes it feel like a much more grand adventure game. Right. <clears throat> Obviously, no voice acting, but... <laughs> One of the, the more amusing elements is when you talk to somebody, the noise they make, they go... Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> <laughs> but it is amusing. I, I'm not making fun. It, it's just something that amuses me. It's like, right. when you talk to... Burr, 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 burr. So, it's fine. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure what more I can say about this game, except that I'm hooked on it. This is a game that actually pulled me away from Monster Hunter World, and all I want to do is play it some more. I want to explore the land, build my settlement, discover all there is to find on this map. Hopefully this game will make its way to other platforms too, so more gamers, other than just PC gamers, can experience the joy that I felt playing it as well. It's a fun game. Well, I think you sold me on it. I At really think you would, because... Uh, what was that one game that you were trying to, to get me to play that was kind of like Dragon Warrior? That came out in two chapters, two stories? Is, is, no, I can't. It's like right on tip of my tongue. Oh, was it the... Um, oh, it was the one that kind of made fa uh, Fantasy yeah, Warrior? Yeah, Fantasy... Like, I don't um, remember what it was Dragon called. Dragon Fantasy. Yeah. There you go. go. Yeah. I mean, this isn't really making fun, but it reminded me in that, that vein. Right. It, it's 2D platformer style RPG, right. but... I don't know. Like I said, just the way it is, the way it plays, you would just give it a minute and you'll get hooked. So, so I mean, because most of those games like that are you have to give it a minute. Yeah, because I wasn't sure because I was like, well, I, I do need to try this out. I want to play it. I've got you know, I got the game. So let, let's see. And I was just kind of playing it, you know, one night, and I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get into this or not. And then some suddenly, just something clicked. I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm in now. I want to play this more. I want to. I want to see where I'm going. Right. So that's all it took. It's just one little thing. So what was that little thing? I think it was that that ore trading game, you know, it, it's, oh, of all the damn things, because it was just like, because I, 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 not understanding what it was, it just yeah. felt like another arbitrary element. But then once I figured it out, I was like, okay, there's a lot more to this than I'm realizing, and that's the light that clicked off. So I wanted to keep pushing that. I wanted to see how far it would go and see what right. it could do. So that just kind of led me in deeper and deeper. And now I just I, I've explored. I don't want to say half the map. I know I've got at least half of it cleared. Right. But there's still... So, I mean, there's so many little icons on that map, dude. What? How big is the map? Uh, I mean, if you're looking out on the screen right here... Yeah. I'd say it fills maybe that area right there. Right. But there's a little icon. Everywhere. Just, I mean, it's... It, I don't want to say it's cluttered, but it might as... I guess that's it's the cluttered. best word for it. Yeah. There's a spot everywhere to go. So it's not like they're spaced out to where you can't... It's right. like, oh, that's it? Just five little spots? No, there's hundreds, at right. least. There's always something to do. Yeah, plenty to do. And I don't even know what the other side of the map looks like. 1999, you put it on PS4, I'll buy it right now. Well, that's not going to happen. We don't have a time machine yet. We're working on it, though. I'm working on it. We're working on it. All right, well, that's the show, man. That's it. That's it. John had problems today. I didn't mention this. Okay. He had sewer problems does he does he listen to our show anymore? i don't know i don't talk to him much he hasn't been around i know it's just like growing when kids grow up they just they just flourish and run off on their own and man. then when you get older you just come back mm -hmm. you know, when the hell come back he'll come back we'd like to thank all of our listeners for being here every week if you've reached this point and you know who you are you're incredibly awesome and the reason we do this if you're feeling generous, you can leave us a review sometime wherever you listen. Comment. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. We can change the show just for you if you kind of want us to, except we're not going to do weird stuff. $5. Like, uh, yeah, $5. $5. We'll, we'll, we might change the show for you. We'll do weird stuff. Do you think there's something you could tell us to do that, that might make us better? Who knows? Tell us. Let us know. Reviews help us. You know, get better. It helps others take notice. People who yeah. don't even know who we are, if they see a review and says, hey, 
people people are talking about this show, man. Please let us know. Yeah. It's a huge benefit for us. It helps the planet. Also, a big shout out to our patrons who make this show and other shows we do possible. If you're interested in supporting the show, you can go to patreon.com slash pencil and paper productions. Take a look around. (laughs) See what you might want to do. Chuck in a buck. Chuck in a buck. Thank you so much for listening. I am Stephen White. I am Todd Stark. Join us again next time, Super Mega Crash siblings. But until then, game on. (laughs) 